Before the United States declared its independence, French fur traders set up remote outposts in Minnesota, and the Spanish sailed through the Florida Keys. Revolutionary France, a fellow republic, was an early ally that would later gift the Statue of Liberty to the new US. By the 19th century, European leaders were reluctantly recognizing the United States as a growing political force. More conservative powers viewed the republican ideals of the American experiment as chaotic, destabilizing, and dangerous. Ideas that needed to be kept away from Europe's empires and kingdoms. European states still wanted access to the burgeoning US market, and the Atlantic was soon crisscrossed with steamships and trade deals, promising friendship, commerce, and navigation. Ocean liners enabled mass immigration from Eastern, Central, and Southern Europe. And as ships crossed the ocean, so too did ideas. Debates over isolationism and internationalism waxed and waned. Two world wars scrambled what had been the prevailing global order. These conflicts left a powerful vacuum, and Europe and the US stepped in to fill it. During and after the Second World War, European refugees fled to places like California, where they established media empires and created films of enduring fame like Casablanca. While Europeans in exile helped build Hollywood, American jazz and blues artists flooded nightclubs in Paris, planting the seeds for Europeans' infatuation with American music. These musicians, many of whom were African American, experienced freedoms they hadn't had in the US. Their return home from Europe helped bolster early efforts that grew into the U.S. civil rights movement. In the wake of World War II, the U.S. provided a massive economic stimulus package to 18 war-torn European countries, nearly $130 billion in today's terms. This helped participating economies outperform pre-war levels and is generally regarded as pivotal in currying American favor in Western Europe against Soviet influence in the East. Americans and Europeans also established the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. NATO symbolized Western security and solidarity throughout the Cold War, ultimately contributing to the collapse of the Soviet Union. In the flower power decade of the 1960s, anti-war movements spread through both sides of the Atlantic. The Beatles, The Doors, and The Rolling Stones took over record players from Athens to Atlanta. In 1968, Czechoslovakians donning American blue jeans took to the streets to demand liberal reforms, while Americans protested the Vietnam War. In Poland, cowboys in Western films rallied the resistance. A Jude played on the radio, while activists in Nordic nations laid the foundations of the contemporary environmental movement. Later, Bootlegged Hollywood VHS tapes played behind the Iron Curtain in countries like Romania, convincing viewers that another world did exist. The fall of the Berlin Wall would symbolize the collapse of the Soviet Union, and, with it, the growing sphere of American influence and the opportunity for a more unified Europe. With the fall of the wall came a renewed sense of urgency to fortify the transatlantic relationship. President Reagan's conviction politics had rattled transatlantic relations, and France's refusal to support the American invasion of Iraq was met with an effort to rename French fries in the US. The Obama administration was caught spying on German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and in 2016, isolationist Donald Trump was elected president. Thank you very much. In Europe and the US today, crumbling towns abound increasingly abandoned in favor of shiny metropolises like Barcelona or San Francisco. Militant conservatism and a desire to go backward in time are rising. Some oppose big governments, while others think the government isn't doing enough. When the US president vows to represent the citizens of Pittsburgh, not Paris, it can feel like the world's two best friends are drifting apart. But if the history books tell us anything, these debates about the transatlantic relationship are nothing new. Rural farmers in Lithuania and Kansas share a similar set of concerns. Increasing urbanization, the effects of climate change on agriculture, and a quickly digitizing world that is overtaking traditional lifestyles. Other problems like rising housing costs, data privacy, and automation worry younger generations on both sides of the Atlantic. Our collective history underlies and in many ways has produced this set of similar problems. 
For centuries, it is the citizens on both sides of the Atlantic who have constructed and maintained the heart of the transatlantic relationship. Despite what seem like widening fissures between two great allies, our shared past reminds us that we are living through history and that the future will always be better when we take it on together.